Today, there are over 7,000 ETFs out there. In 2021 alone, over 1,300 new ETFs were launched. They are a great way to invest into the stock market in a simple and cheap way. But of course, no investment is perfect and ETFs have their downsides too. That's why in this video, we will look at the four biggest flaws of ETFs that you should be aware of. Let's go. What's up everyone, this is FU Academy, your channel for financial education and on this channel I share lifestyle, investing now and educational videos just like this one. So if you are new here, consider subscribing. Right, let's jump right into ETF floor number one, volatility. If we take a look at the S&P 500 in the last 100 years, your real return, including dividends and adjusted for inflation would have been 8%. But that's not a guarantee for the future, it's just the US average over the last Last 100 years there can be years or sometimes even decades where the stock market isn't going up it's only going sideways or even down and that's nothing unusual have a look at the annual stock market performance of the s p 500 you can see that there are many years where the index lost money at times even more than 30 percent look at the bell chart that maps the annual return of the s p 500 over the last 200 years into buckets you can see that most of the time yes you got a return between 0 to 20 percent but in some years you would have made a negative return of 20, 30, 40% and look at the worst year, the S&P 500 would have lost you half your money. There can be even decades where the stock market isn't going up like in the 70s or 2000s. If we look at other markets like Japan for example, then the Nikkei which is their stock market index is still 30% below its 1989 level if we adjust for inflation. Similar to individual stocks, there is a volatility for ETFs as well. It it's not just a straight line that goes up, so be prepared to have years or even a decade where an ETF doesn't go up. But history has also shown that the longer you stay invested, the lower your risk of losing money becomes. In the last 100 years, if you invested in an S&P 500 index, the chances of losing your money after one month would have been almost 40%. But if you held your investment for 15 years, that percentage would have gone down to 0.2%. So if you invested at any random point in the last 100 years and kept that investment for 15 years, you would have lost money only 0.2% of the time. But big disclaimer, past performance is not a guarantee for the future, but an indication. And that brings us to ETF floor number two, active ETFs. ETFs have developed quite a bit over time. The very first ETF is this buy ETF from State Street. That one was launched in 93 with the only goal to track the S&P 500 index. So when the S&P 500 goes up by 1%, then this buy will do almost exactly the same thing. I said almost because of the tracking difference, but we will get to that later in this video. The very first ETFs were launched to be completely passive with the only goal to track the market. Today, there are ETFs out there that track everything. They can be as exotic as short or leveraged ETFs. If you want to know what these are and find out more dangerous ETFs that you should stay away from, then check out the video in the link. So since they were first launched, ETF have evolved quite a bit. They are now being used by actively managed funds that just use the label ETF to participate in the ETF boom. Active ETFs are the ones that cover a very narrow industry or even place active bets on certain stocks. And that's not what ETFs were built for. If you buy into these active ETFs, then you are no longer just passively investing into the market. And that can go well, but most of the times it doesn't. In fact, only 10% of actively managed funds could beat the S&P 500 as a benchmark over a time frame of 15 years. By the way, if you want to know why most active ETFs like the ARK Innovation Fund fail, then check out the video in the link in which I warned of the ARK crash just before it happened. Yep, I called that one. I personally don't believe that you need to actively bet on certain industries or companies. If you pick a passive ETF, it will track the performance of thousands of companies. If certain industries perform well, then their share in the ETF basket will increase over time. And that's exactly what happened to tech over the last few years. Their share in passive ETFs increased. So you don't need to bet on certain industries. A passive ETF will take care of that for you. And that brings us to ETF floor number three, liquidity risk. But what does liquidity actually mean? 
2018. In stock market investing, liquidity describes the degree to which an asset can be quickly bought or sold in the market at a price reflecting its intrinsic value. In other words, it describes how fast you can sell your stock or ETF without moving the share price. If an ETF, for example, is thinly traded, it can be a problem getting out of your investment at a price that is close to the market price. There are two factors that drive liquidity with ETFs. Factor number one is trading volume. The best way to protect yourself from a liquidity risk is by buying liquid ETFs that are traded frequently. If you want to know which ETFs these are, then check out my video on the most popular ETFs in the link. Factor number two that drives liquidity with ETFs is their composition. Generally, ETFs that invest in large cap stocks are the most liquid. That's because small cap stocks are usually not traded often. If you would have a market crash and all ETF holders try to get out of a small cap ETF, it could create a massive spread between the bid and the ask price. If you want to find out more pros and cons of small cap investing, then check out the video in the link. And that, my friends, brings us to ETF floor number four, costs. One of the biggest advantages of ETFs is that they trade like stocks. That means that investors can simply buy and sell them at any given time. But with most brokers, every time you do that, you pay a commission. Depending on how often you buy and sell an ETF, trading fees can quickly add up and reduce your total return. And that's not the only type of cost that you have with ETFs. The other one is the ETF's expense ratio. These are the costs that an ETF provider has for running a fund, which can include management, trading, legal, and auditor fees. If we look at the IBV, for example, which is BlackRock's S&P 500 ETF, then you can see that this one has an expense ratio of 0.03% and that's low. It means that for every thousand dollars invested, you end up paying 30 cents in expense fees per year, but expense ratios can quickly go up the more niche you get. If we look at BlackRock's iShares MSCI Emerging Markets ETF, for example, that one has an expense ratio of 0.68%. And that's not even an exotic ETF. You can easily end up paying 2% in expense ratios if you get really niche. And here is the dangerous thing. You don't even have to pay these fees separately. They are built into the ETF share price. Think about it like this. If the ETF goes up by 10% in one year, then the ETF provider will take a tiny cut of that to cover their expenses. You won't even notice it, but it will bring down your total return. You will only notice it over a longer period of time if you look at an ETF's tracking difference. The tracking difference tells you by how much a fund has out or underperformed its benchmark index. If the tracking difference is positive, then an ETF has outperformed its index. If it's negative, then it has underperformed its index. If there is no tracking difference, then it has perfectly tracked its index. In reality, the tracking difference is almost always negative. If we look at BlackRock's emerging market ETF again, you can go to the performance chart. Here, you can see a green line which shows you the performance of an index, in this case, the MSCI Emerging Market index. And then you can see a blue line that shows you the performance of the ETF. You might notice how the blue line becomes more and more visible, which means that the tracking difference becomes bigger and bigger over time. And that's because of a fund's expense ratio. On top of the expense ratio, there are other factors that can lead to a negative tracking difference. One of them is the creation and redemption process in which an authorized participant takes advantage of price differences between the stocks in an ETF and the net asset value of the fund itself. Itself. I made a dedicated video on that topic in a super simple way, which has become one of my best performing videos ever. If you want to learn more about it, then check out the video in the link. There you have it, the four biggest flaws of ETFs that you should be aware of. Don't get me wrong, in my opinion, ETFs are still the best way to invest in the stock market for the majority of investors. If you do it right, they are cheap, simple, transparent and effective. But what do you actually think? Have I missed a point. Do you invest in ETFs or do you do stock picking? As always, let me know in the comment section below. I hope that this video can bring some value to you if you like what you saw and you want to support this channel and please make sure you subscribe. Thank you very much for doing that and peace.